let x be a number such that 7 to the x equals 3 fifths. What is 49 to the x? Now at first you might see a problem like this and it's completely confusing because you have no idea what to do. But notice we've got 7 here, we've got 49 here. So there's going to be some sort of clever trick connecting the fact that 49 has something to do with 7, right? How is 49 related to 7? 49 is equal to 7 squared, right? So there's this connection between 49 and 7. So we can use that. We can now apply that and we can go 49 to the x. Well, we know that 49 is equal to 7 squared. So we can just substitute that out. So 49, put it in parentheses, to the x is the same thing as 7 squared to the x, right? Nothing you can do to just stop substitution like that. So 7 squared to the x. So that means 7 to the 2 times x. But we could also write that as 7 to the x times 2, which we could then write as 7 to the x all raised to the 2, which would be, hey, we know what 7 to the x is. It's 3 fifths. So we've got 3 fifths all raised to the 2, which means we've got 9 over 25 because we square the 3 and we square the 5. 3 fifths squared means that the square will go on to the 3, go on to the 5. All right, pretty cool stuff, exponents. They're really, really powerful. It's important to get a good grasp of just working with them, though. The only way that you'll be able to get really comfortable with them is doing some practice. Just make sure that you do some practice on exponentiation using exponents of various types. But once you get in a bit of practice, you'll get used to it. They're skills that sort of stick with you. And you re as long as you stay with this x to the a times x to the b, equals x to the a plus b. As long as you stay with that idea, you can figure out everything else if you get in a situation where you forget one of the rules. All right, we'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.